Hey, AP students, congratulations on finishing up Software Engineering 2 and moving towards AP Computer Science Principles. I'm so excited to be teaching you all again, and I'm really, really excited for you guys to try this coding project as a part of your summer work. Um, I think this is probably going to be the most challenging piece of your summer work, and I think that's a good thing for you guys. It's going to keep you on your toes. You'll be using most of the skills that we learned in Software Engineering 2, and then you'll be challenging yourself with this one new thing. And if you have already looked at the starter code I gave you, um, some of you are going to be very curious, why did I give you a starter code that looks just like any other P5 new project program that you could have opened? Um, and to answer that, I'm going to show you and then I'm going to kind of give you a little tour around um, this thing you'll be using to help you with this. So this code does look normal. I am in complete agreement with you. But if I open this up and I click into the index.html, it looks normal, normal, normal until about line eight. And then you're going to see a bunch of stuff that you have never seen before. Um, and if you keep going down, you're going to see just so much stuff that you have not needed to look at before. And all of this stuff is linking a new library called Collide2D to this P5 sketch program that you're working in. If you guys remember, P5 is a JavaScript library, and it is a library we're using because somebody much smarter than us, much more time on their hands, has already put work into designing all the functions you use. So when you use like ellipse and rectangle and line and text, all of those things require actually quite a bit of math and logic that is a little above where we are right now. Um, but somebody made that for us so that we can just use it whenever we want. Similarly, somebody made this Collide library and they made it so that we can link it to our P5 projects and call upon all of these custom functions that they have written to make our life easier as long as we have those things connected. So the other thing that you're going to see in your summer work is a link to this GitHub page, which is where the Collide2D library lives. Now, you don't need to worry about a lot of this. Um, GitHub is like this super cool website where most people who are professional computer scientists, professional developers have accounts on this page. They host their code there. They collaborate with other people there. They find useful libraries like this there and use them in their own projects. Um, so this is really your first step on being a new developer, but it can look super overwhelming. When we scroll down, we see that it says P5 Collide 2D, and we see all of the links to these files, which we don't need to worry about too much if we're totally honest. Um, these are all things that we could click into. We could even download and like incorporate in our program manually. You guys do not have to do that. Not in a summer project. We'll save that for stuff during the year. But when we keep scrolling down, we are going to see that there's this lovely readme, which is really long and lucky for us comes with a table of contents. So it is going to describe things about the library. It's going to give you a link on how to add libraries to your sketch. You do not need to do that now. Um, if in the future you want to explore other P5 libraries, you're welcome to. And it just gives you some information that it's assuming rectangles are always drawn from the corner, circles are always drawn from the center. That is default for us anyway. We don't need to worry about that. Um, there's also some examples that use this. So if you want to click into them and like play with some examples that use this library, you can, things you can do with it. But what we care most about is as we go down, we are going to see this table of contents with links to all of these custom functions that are made in a part of the library. And the thing that this should be reminding you of is that P5 reference sheet, where you guys went to get a lot of your answers and to look things up and to check things throughout your year in software engineering too. That's essentially what this is for this other library. So what all of these functions do is they are programmed to take in two components in P5. You see all the different shapes listed there. And it checks to see if they're touching each other or not using all kinds of math and physics that we personally don't want to have to deal with. Then it returns to the program true or false, which if you recall is one of those Boolean values that we learned about. This is not the first time you guys have used functions that take in Boolean values. When you use things like mouse is pressed or key is pressed, that essentially does the same thing. When you use mouse is pressed, it's always returning false up until that moment when you click the mouse, then it starts returning true. So all of these things here are things that you could use in a conditional or anywhere else in your code that you need to make things happen. So as far as how you use this, um, you can tell that they are combining all kinds of different shapes. You are going to have to make a decision about which function works for you based on which two shapes you are trying to figure out are touching or not. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this with the idea of two circles running into each other. So I'm going to click collide circle circle. 
if I click Clyde Circle Circle, it's just, it's not taking me to a new page. It's just jumping me down the page to where this lives. And you see that the first thing under Clyde Circle Circle is this. This is just documentation of how we would use this function. And it might look familiar because sometimes when we took notes during code alongs, it looked like this. This is telling us that the function name is Clyde Circle Circle, typed exactly like this. And it needs to take in six numbers. It needs to take in the x and y value of the first circle along with that circle's diameter, then the x, y, and diameter of the second circle. After that, we can just call this function in our code and it will do that thing of updating the true or false. So in this code, they're not using it in a conditional, but I cannot stress enough that you can, and that's probably what you'll be doing in this project. They're just using it to change the value of a variable. So they have a variable called hit that starts as false. In the draw function, they're checking to see if these two circles are going to touch. Once they touch, it's going to print out in the console that these two circles are colliding. This would say true instead of false, and then you know that they're touching. Um, I think this is pretty direct and I really believe that you guys are going to be able to figure it out, but I understand this is new. So if at any point in time using this is something that's confusing to you, um, please reach out to me via email. If needed, we can find a time to like zoom together and go over some examples or look at your code, but I'm excited for you guys to challenge yourself and I'm excited to see your finished games. Bye.